Mr. Aaron, and what are we talking about tonight? Uh, tonight we're looking at Space 1999, which is one I do actually remember watching and was repeated here a few times. Here we have the sort of the classic mainstay of just about every series through the 70s, and you've got the cards. And Space 1999 cards, I don't know if they were released here, but I found quite a few sets locally. They are all import sets, so I'm pretty sure Scanlon's never did them. And they are a nice set of cards, but what they've done is what they did with a lot of cards. They've used a generic border, so you've got this um, red and blue and then the white border, and they've just put the the pictures from the show and I was looking through some of the cards and there are some amazingly nice pictures up in the top corner there there is another set of cards and you can see they're playing cards because when you turn them over mm. they've got the different suits on the back and they're artistic and these are probably the last set of Jerry Anderson um, cards that that did this even later series they didn't really go back and do this sort of um, charming almost 60s style artwork of uh, collectible cards so that's a bit of a passing of the era and you can see that people have got these cards boxed but also got them um, graded so there are collectors out there of these cards that are trying to get nice graded versions yes there were the sunny crust bread space 1999 cards i didn't put them up because we just run out of time Okay, now we looked at this when we looked at Starlog magazines and Space 1999 was very interesting because it's one of the few British shows that had blanket um, media, not just in Starlog, but a lot of American magazines. And Dags and I were talking about this when we did the Starlog show and our theory is Star Trek had ended and it was only getting more and more popular after it went into syndication. And there was a void on American television for a show like Star Trek. And out of all the shows that came out of the British um, television studios, Space 1999 probably has the most similar tone to Star Trek. Um, it's got the American actors. Um, so mm. you've instantly got Americans more invested than they might be. But a lot of the stories are more of that maybe a little bit more science fiction like Star Trek and you've got aliens and lasers and it's a very similar tone. It's just a UK version of it and instead of the Enterprise, you're on the moon. Um, we're looking at TV Times, which is sort of the radio times for ITV um, in the UK at the time and it got a cover. Um, it was launched in a big way on this uh, in America and in the UK. It was one of those shows, again, it probably wasn't, didn't have the same press as UFO did a couple of years before, and it wasn't um, sexualized as much as UFO, where half yeah. the press from UFO, you had a lot of sexy girls. This was, this is a serious sci-fi show with some, um, some fantasy overtones, and they really market it as for adults. It's a, a new blast off into space um, and follow the, I guess the trials of moon base as it goes out of the solar system and what they encounter. So the tone was totally different, even though it was a kind of similar show to UFO and it was pitched at a more adult market. And this, I guess, has its pros and its cons. Space 1999 sort of comes at the end of sort of what I call the great era of British comics, which were where stuff was still being drawn in uh, the UK and still had a really obvious stylistic difference from America after this when you get to the 70s and 80s, most of the stuff was reprints of American stuff and a lot of mm. this um, more detailed and more painterly type art sort of disappeared and isn't around as much. And this art is really highly respected today. To get the originals, it goes for quite a lot in auction and there's bound volumes of uh, the different storylines from this period that people collect because it is very hard to track down the originals look in magazine probably not as exciting as countdown or tv 21 but this is where uh, space 1999 turned up and you can see that it had quite a few um, impressive covers over the time that it was on tv and generally with look in you didn't get like a solo cover there's a couple there but usually you'd have um, all the different elements that were in the magazine. Obviously, on this one, they were pushing Space 1999, though. And um, there was, of course, the comic book run as well, where Space 1999 had quite a, co a popular comic book. But you can see where I've highlighted down the bottom there, uh, I call that the more American style of comics, although at the time, I guess it was being used in the UK, where that sort of old artist um, sensibility had changed and they were going more for the Marvel look. So when you saw the previous page and every 
every book is more of a work of art. They obviously went to the cheaper paper and then the quicker, mm. um, the quicker illustrations. And that's because the ones that were coming out in Look In, there was two pages each week where the ones that are coming out in comic book form, there's probably about 40 pages um, once a month or twice a month. So you have to have a quicker style to get it out. But I do like that you've got both styles with Space 1999. So if you like that old um, painterly style, you can see that. Or if you like the Marvel comic style or the more American style, you've got them as well. Yep. So we've kind of slid through across from comics into comic albums and soundtracks and space 1999 was one of those fantastic shows that had the read-along books and you've got one fantastic one there that i've never seen but it's got to be great if they're finding space noah and his ark because you know that's very hardcore science fiction isn't it um and then you've got the soundtracks and the soundtracks for all the jerry anderson shows are fantastic and this was no exception um, Space 1999 is an instant really recognisable theme, but also the cues and things in the show that give it atmosphere. You can tell straight away it's a Jerry Anderson production because he had a very similar house style for a lot of the things he did. And Space 1999 is probably um, the first series from Jerry Anderson that spawned more, spawned more than a couple of books. Like most of his series had a couple of paperbacks, but Space 1999 had multiple series written by different people that had the episodes novelized and then also had original stories that continued on and this is one of the series and a lot of the jerry anderson stuff was hard to find in australia but i do remember seeing a lot of the space 1999 um, paperbacks and i used to pick them up and sell them at science fiction fairs and they'd always go um, and i thought they're very very of their time where you've got that paperback You've got the logo from the show, then you've got a couple of pictures from the episode, which was kind of ahead of its time because a lot of the other books at the time were illustrations and um, artists. But this was before a lot of the other books were putting photos from the episodes on the cover of the book. So these are a nice little series of books. And at a time before the internet, finding pictures from shows you could only find in magazines or occasionally posters. So having pictures on the books, I always love that. After the internet, you can Google anything. But before the internet, mm. it was a nice visual reference to have photos on books. Yep. Here is some of the other series of books. And you can see there were quite a few. So I can imagine if you're a Space 1999 fan, finding the full series of paperbacks in mint condition would actually be quite a challenge because um, now you're getting to where they're 50 years old and they've been uh, read a bit. Some of these things start to fall to pieces. The books do bring back waves of nostalgia for me because they were one of those things I'd kind of forgotten about. And when I was looking at them going, wow, I remember seeing sections of these in secondhand bookshops and you just don't see them anymore. And like all the other Jerry Anderson stuff, a lot of the um, the kids sort of activity book um, publishers jumped on it and there are various ones and I have had a couple of these over the time so Space 1999 obviously got more releases in Australia than UFO which I basically never saw that one on the top with the eagle flying past the moon with the black background I think it, I think I had that for a while because I thought it was a particularly nice book down in the bottom left you have um, Christopher Lee Yep. At his appearance in um, Space 1999, immortalised in a colouring book. So so there you go. Um, he was one of those more interesting characters. And they did get um, a range of actors in Space 1999 that were known to people probably because they put so much money into the budget. Yeah, so Space 1999 had um, the four annuals that you see there. Uh, again, you used to see them around. Sorry, there's actually six. What am I talking about? Um, you used to see them around. I'm pretty sure the bottom two turned up in Australia as, you know, mass released ones in bookshops. The top four were always tough to find here. So they might have only been in specialty shops. But usually, um, and this happens in Australia, we get everything a year or two after it's released mm. originally. And what can I, what I can imagine happened, we probably didn't get Space 1999 a year or two until after it was released. So there was no purpose in bringing in the earlier annuals and then by the time it was popular and being re repeated it had probably finished and so the later annuals were released here because we were the the market who was watching it so um that's interesting that they did get so many annuals because it wasn't a show you would think after its um lifespan would would be very well remembered yeah i just wanted to highlight something it's interesting to see the different types of font used for the title and some of them have the uh, colons and some don't so yeah. um 
yeah, up to this point, this the Space 1999 logo has been the same the whole way through. But on the annuals, there's definitely like you now different variations here and different variations up there and all this sort of thing. So this is about the only one that's relatively correct. And this one here even has the colon missing as well. So that's how reason yeah. why I stayed on this picture. So yeah. So yeah, it was only the last one that got the logo right. So there mm. you go. You've got some inside um, pictures for the annuals. The annuals were good because they had um, pictures of Moonbase Alpha and as I was saying at the time, you couldn't see these pictures anywhere unless they were published in magazines or books. So they would have been quite, quite, um, you know, great things for kids to have under their Christmas tree, which is generally when annuals came out around Christmas if you're a Space 1999 fan. But there's a lot of people that do collect them. So with Space 1999, there's some nice ones out there. Good stuff. Now, there's a question way up here earlier. How hard is it for the die-cast Eagle ships to get? Well, funnily enough, we're onto that now. I hope my hard drive hasn't fallen asleep because it's now time for this. We're going back and looking at the dinky toys, which Colin was talking about. And uh, for Space 1999, they only released the Eagle. But um, occasionally when we go through these episodes, I'll put a, a toy out as, as one of the best toys ever. And I do think the Eagle yep. from Dinky Toys is one of the best toys ever made. This um, was available for years after the series just because so many people loved it. Um, they did different coloured ones. I don't think some of the colours appeared in the actual series. And if you wanted to get really pedantic about it, you could get them with red plastic boosters and also silver plastic boosters. But the thing with this toy was it was a very, very accurate version of the model. And unlike most dinky toys, it actually did something. So you push a little button on the top and it actually drops off the midsection, which is the changeable section of the Eagle for different missions. And because they released different versions of it, you could drop off your scientific um, lab mm. and then you could drop off your fuel pods and then you could get the Eagle to land and you could attach them back up and stuff like that. And I just think, if you're a kid that loves science fiction, and this is in the mid-70s where the, the space race is still happening and they're going to the moon and you're getting all these different series on, this would be an absolutely fantastic toy which would fuel your imagination. So, yeah, here's, here's some different versions of the packaging because it was one of those toys that was around for so long it went through various packaging um, examples. And if you look at the top there, it's a bit hard to see, but the green one uh, shows one of the variants where the, the, the booster rockets on... The one in the box is red and the booster rockets and the one in the clear um, bubble uh, are silver. So if you really wanted to collect them all, there's all these different variants. Getting them in mint condition is pretty hard. You do find them sometimes played with and chipped up a bit, but this is one of those toys you'd really like to have in, in mint condition. So it is one of those wish list toys for a lot of people that collect sci-fi in general. Uh, Rusky Bowers has confirmed, yeah, they're all white. I mean, they've obviously, because uh, he accepted the striped one for the uh, medical thing, um, yeah. you can see why they've put the colours in just to make them more visually appealing and, of course, to make them a little bit more different for, you know, kids' eyes. Oh, my God, green ones and blue ones. I always remember just the fact that they were green and go, oh, how cool is that? Didn't even look at them in the show to see what colour they were. In the mid-'70s, people still mainly had black and white television, so it didn't really yeah. matter. Yeah, exactly right. Um, these are pictures from the toy fair for it coming out, but it was released and it really does surprise me because Space 1999 wasn't a huge hit that a toy this big and this awesome came out. And it wasn't just a toy that was a static model kit. You could open it, it had figures that would go inside. The figures were about the same size as Star Wars figures. So everyone says, you know, Star Wars were the first ones to do the figures at this scale. Well, they had um, figures with this ship that were pretty close. And I tell you what, I love the artwork on the top there. It's that yeah. sort of classic 70s artwork. It would be really lovely to have in anyone's science fiction collection. Um, yeah. And as you said, you've got the ships, which is all very groovy, but you need dudes to put inside them. Yeah, and Alpha Moon Base. So it is one of those things where um, they're kind of classed as Mego, but they were brought out by Dennis Fisher and Mattel. Um, so obviously the license was getting handballed around a bit. Um, but they did bring out a range of figures. And, of course, they brought out figures from both series and they brought out the Moonbase crew. And they also brought out some of the aliens. The aliens from Space 1999 are particularly impossible to find. Um, I have seen a couple of the figures over the years. Usually they're loose. Um, they tend to turn up in good condition. I don't think they got thrashed as much just because of the nature of the show was a bit more sci-fi rather than action but i have never had any of the aliens so you've got some particularly um interesting and groovy aliens there some of them 
look very close to what they were in the series and some of them look like, well, maybe we have an alien toy. Let's just slip it in a um, Space 1999 box and call it the alien from Space 1999. Now, here's some interesting stuff here. Space 1999 was quite well merchandised and a lot of people picked up the license and used it on mainly rack toys, I guess, but you've got communicators and, and blasters and pistols and water pistols and um, things like that. But I, I love the Space 1999 official parachute because, you know, parachuting on the moon is one of those things that works really well, isn't it? You've yep. got colouring um, activity books and sets and then you've got the bagatelle which is the little mini pinball machine which is particularly hard to get i've seen um loose ones i i found a boxed one there i'd never seen a boxed one for sale um ever so finding this could be quite a challenge here are some of the games and they released a few games which again says it must have been popular when they released more than one admittedly one of them is spazio 1999 um so a foreign version but that's fantastic when the show is popular enough that overseas the license gets some love and they release some international stuff um there's the big space 1999 game admittedly i have never played these games i tried to have a look at what they were um, online um, some of these old date board games I used to have, but I never came across any of these here. Both of them seem to be um, moon base alpha going through space and encountering things either in sectors or the other one you're going around like a spiral into the middle of the board. Um, both of them are huge, which usually translate to they don't survive well because the bigger a box is, the easier it is to get crushed and destroyed. So these would probably be quite challenging to get in good condition too. Now, these are, are jigsaws, and again, I had a couple, but I did not realise um, there was that many released. I think the ones I've seen in Australia are the ones on the right in the blue boxes um, that used to turn up at fairs. Uh, admittedly, I haven't seen any of these turn up for years. Jigsaws are one of those things that attrition with age kind of destroys every time people have a clear out. Um, I think the... The pictures on these are pretty good. There's a good range of different stuff from the the crew of the um, moon base Alpha and then some of the aliens, some of the spacewalks and stuff like that. So I think if you were into this, there was sort of enough jigsaws that you could get one for Christmas every couple of years and you'd be pretty happy. The ones in the middle are particularly interesting for jigsaws because and a lot of the jigsaws we see have sort of very average level art levels, but the ones in the middle there are almost like early versions of movie jigsaw poster poster jigsaws that you could get later and that would be one of the earliest examples i've seen of that for a franchise um i looked at this picture up here and it looks like they've taken the inspiration from this island earth i so did think that and the mutant has been replaced with like a mechanical ape or something like that so yeah. now space 1999 is one of those series that they really did um release quite a few times over the years on different versions of video now i remember um, my earliest memories of Space 1999 were probably actually um, hiring from the video library a couple of the episodes that they'd cut into movies like Destination, Moonbase Alpha and The Cosmic Princess. Um, they were ones that I probably saw first before I saw repeats of the show. And I do mm. think Space 1999 got a lot of video releases just because Martin Landau and the American cast yeah. meant um, it would get a dual release in America, which would trigger two different video releases. So you get like this bulk of tapes where you can see there's different series that were released all through the 80s and 90s. Yeah, very good stuff. All right, we're going to buzz off and leave you to it. Uh, and we'll see you all next week. So uh, be sure if you do have the Space 1999 clickables, oh, what do you do? Keep it mitten box, Mr. Aaron. Yeah, or like I said, rip it out of orbit. Love it. All right, leave you to it, guys. Take care. All the best. Good night, guys.